I'm Joe Panetta, and I'm president and CEO of Biocom. And it's a real privilege for me to welcome you here this morning to our first ever big data summit. I'm the chair, uh, co-chair of the mobile data uh, committee, and we are going to be capturing at the very least one month of wearable mobile data on all 10,000 kids for on a daily basis, again, for a, for a full month, ideally longer than that. At the end of the panel, we'll talk about a very exciting opportunity that we might have here in San Diego to, uh, to bring together some of the big data uh, uh, initiatives. Yes, conservative estimate is one in five, but that is a lot of people. And it's not just diabetes we need data for. Pre-diabetes is a condition as well. And I'm your perfect example. My, my father's mother and my mother's father both died from complications related to type 2 diabetes. And there's certainly a rise of, of the consumer patient mindset. Uh, apps are everywhere and health apps are everywhere. So that's been a boondoggle for us. Now, the reason I came to Illumina is twofold. The, the first is just the whole uh, notion of being able to make an impact on human health. But then the other thing I also realized, the kind of challenges that we face in uh, big data in the genomic space are truly unique. These instruments produce a huge amount of data, and that's where informatics or, or software is needed. If we practice the art of mindfulness, and if we're skilled in being resilient and knowing how to de-escalate an upsetting conversation rather than escalate it, um, we will achieve better health. The data on this is overwhelming. We are looking at a big data tsunami. We all know it. It's scary. We turn our back to it, put up our headphones and broom our own stoop or build our own silo. And then we got panicked. We called in the help of the bioinformaticians and the informatics people. And they started telling us about, we need standards. They got so convinced about the need for standards, they all developed their own, problem not solved. Everything that's been talked about today has tied into big data in some way. Zeo is a fiber infrastructure company globally. Uh, we provide and acquire fiber, build it in the ground uh, for the purpose of transmitting and uh, big data. 10 years ago, we had compute, storage, and database as a service. And companies found a lot of benefit in a lot of these open source projects. They found a home on AWS, things like, you know, the Broad Institute's JTK, where they made it very simple to put a lot of these bioinformatics workloads into the cloud. You can now go to the Bioconductor website, and in about three clicks, you're up and you're running, you know, uh, a Bioconductor RStudio server in the cloud that can pretty much take on any data workload you can throw at it. We were doing a lot of things with big data. It was right when weblogs were really pouring tons of data into our environment. We were trying to figure out how to respond to the scale and the enormity of that data volume, and at the same time, extract value out of that data in a meaningful way, right? So we wanted to not just uncover insights, but we actually wanted to, um, in uh, a very digital media-centered um, set of incentives, actually monetize that data. And if we think about what's really happened in the last 12, 10, 12 years, and where things are gonna go in the next five, next 10, it's a really exciting time. And given the really vast amount of resources and innovation that's coming out of San Diego, as technology evolves, we really must evolve with it. But even better, we must be the ones to evolve it. We've already been through some of this, this idea that there's a lot of data out there, right? There's no question, there's a big tsunami of data. Um, we, we've talked about how uh, probably about 10% of that data is clinical data that you're going to generate in your lifetime, things that you're normally going to find in, in uh, a health record, things like your uh, lab test results, uh, all the structured fields in that electronic health record. Our vision at Ivy Watson Health is not for us to come in and Watson is not going to save the world, right? Watson is going to enable and augment and work with all of the people that already have expertise. Because it's not what can Watson do, it's what do you want Watson to do? Because really we can probably train Watson to do just about what you need. It's a matter of how soon, how much money, and is that a priority? 